Let us explain MicroMIM application for medical industry. We have a lot of different endoscope components, and there are parts with undercut hollow structure or microstructure that cannot be removed from the mold usually. And uh, in our case, we can make such parts. So some of the examples are the forceps that goes into the surgical device, endoscope, and so on. Of course, we are not really allowed to show most of the customer's uh, components. So we have created our own forceps in the models, and most of them are 10 to maximum 20 millimeter in the length. If you have some device that utilizes such medical forceps, please come and consult with us. The other thing we do a lot for the medical device is special gears. As you might know, we often use helical gear in the medical device as the noise is very, very quiet. And some other shape gears that are not possible or very difficult to manufacture with other conventional manufacturing technology are often manufactured by our microbin technology. Then the sharp edge is showing here. This is not a medical um, blade sharp edge, but you can apply, of course, the same method to create blades and needles for the medical device as well. For the same reason, we cannot show the medical device blade and needle. And this has the sharp edge of 10 micron in here. And uh, the round uh, place is only five micron. The devices with undercut is shown here. That is usually impossible with uh, normal mold technology. So the top here, the three pictures of the microstructure are from the left, micro wheel that has 500 micron shaft with only 120 micron diameter of this shaft. To the uh, right of that, this is a sensor holder that has 80 micron wall thickness here on this thinnest point. Then the micro nozzle that is very challenging to create with a mold is with 30 micron hole here with the aspect ratio of one to 10. So it was very challenging to create without any secondary process. So when we had the test and had seen this water coming out of this nozzle, we were really excited. Now I would like to show you some of the significant points that make our MicroMIM um, micro significant points that make our technology very special. The first one is the feedstock. We purchase the metal powder, obviously, because we cannot really atomize them in large scale in house. Then the binder is mixed with the metal powder and then it goes into the kneading and pelletization process. We have batch type kneading system and it goes into the feedstock. It becomes a feedstock like this. So we are creating the feedstock, which means we can control the variety of the material we can offer. To the right, you see the material list that you probably have seen in one of the other webinars, but we just highlighted the most frequently used material for the medical device industry, which is stainless steel 316L and 174PH, and then titanium and titanium alloy, 64 alloy. Of course, other materials are sometimes used, but these are most common materials. 
So we use the original binder system, which is one of our USP. And the high flowability and the strong green part is the result of our original binder system. So this um, sharp edge is again from the, the same uh, blade. So something like that can be obtained because of our original binder system, which is using the POM base. And we would like to also point out that we have very fantastic material yield, which is 100% material yield. That means it's very economical as well as environmental, because these days, Green purchasing is a key point for the purchasing. So a lot of the purchasing people ask, is this very sustainable technology or not? And this is definitely very sustainable and green technology. As we recycle the runner, 100%. So you can say that this is um, one of the technology that is deemed to be the future mass production technology. Next, I would like to talk about the powder. We use very fine powder in our company because we make micro MIM parts. And we purchase the powder and the binder and mix, as we mentioned before. And we have um, deployed a kneading system that is also suitable for our micro technology. This has a relative density of 98.5% in the case of stainless steel. And the surface roughness comparison in this chart shows the average D50, um, 10 micron, has about a RA 1.5 micron, which is shown here. And the smallest powder size, which has a D50 of 3 micron, has RA of 0 0.35 micron. And of course, this powder is more expensive, but it can achieve better surface quality as well as better tolerance. So it's always a balance of the cost and what you need to achieve in terms of surface roughness and tolerance and so on. So in the MIM process, the forming is only happening in this injection molding process. So the quality of the mold is very, very important. And here I would like to show the invisible parting line, which means you cannot see the parting line on this component. And usually in any parts that are injection molded, you see parting line and of course, ejector pin marks and so on. But in this case, you cannot really find them unless you put it under the microscope. So this is something that uh, we can say that it is because we use very fine metal powder and we know how to handle them in the production process. So we have a policy to make the metal component with minimum post machining and with net shape production, near net shape production. So conventional manufacturer would mostly say, well, we would make the near net shape with MIM and then we machine it as a secondary process and that's the final part. In our micro MIM technology, we would say we make everything with MIM technology only without the machining process afterwards as much as possible. And the high precision MIM technology, which is made of excellent molds, injection molding process, and other special technology. This minimizes the secondary process 
by machine. So you can create such surgical device components without the machining process at the end. So we are making a lot of different medical device components that have different um, complex design, and we can achieve many of them without the additional second process. That means you are able to cut the lead time and the cost in this process. So 3D Micromim is a technology that we developed that enables the mass production of components with shapes that would normally be manufactured by 3D printing, such as undercut hollow structure or microstructured component that cannot be removed from the mold. The only difference between Micromim and 3D Micromim is whether to use the disposable plastic mold or not. And this disposable plastic mold is called SP mold. So basically you are having the SP mold first in one mold, and then it is inserted into the MIM mold and over molded with metal. When it goes to the binding or degreasing slash sintering process, of course the material inside the feedstock goes as well as the SP mold. Both are out of the system with the heat and then you have a sintered part with this structure inside. So it is a process that makes it really flexible for your component designer to make design your parts. So using this 3D micro technology, it's possible to mass produce endoscope and other medical device components with undercut hollow structures or microstructures that cannot be removed from the mold. And if you want to know more about the 3D microwave technology, please refer to our webinar series number four on our YouTube channel. Next topic is sintering technology. So our sintering technology is also one of the USP and we make the debinding and uh, sintering process in one step furnace. So the conventional MIM process has two different furnaces, the binding furnace, which is then moved to the sintering furnace, and this is called the brown parts. And we have just one furnace for both the binding and sintering. That means the brown parts are never out of the, out of the furnace, and we never see them in normal case. So this process is explained in the fifth webinar or the, the binding and sintering process is explained more thoroughly in our webinar series five. So if you are interested and you didn't attend that webinar, please go and have a look on our YouTube channel. So it is really good as we do not need to handle in between the furnaces and there is no cooling between the two processes. Therefore, we can achieve such excellent parts, micro parts like those that I have shown you previously. Now let's talk about AM technology. The 3D metal printing machine was introduced last year, last year in summer. And now we have even um, introduced new 15 micron resolution that is customized for us. And the AM technology is introduced so that instead of making the prototype mold, which is then using the injection molding machine and then sintered, for the prototype phase, we can, in some cases, suggest to create the prototype parts with this AM machine 
and the sintering, the binding and sintering process is the same as our MIM system. So you will get prototype parts much quicker than making the mold for your prototype. And the time to market is also much shorter. So if you have some parts that you need to quickly bring to the market, please take a look at our webinar series three for the detail. Some of the parts that we are making with this AM machine that we are allowed to show are those two parts, double hel helical gear. Um, so this is a comparison of the 50 micron and 35 micron, as we have mentioned in the previous slide, we have now the 50 micron lateral resolution. So you can see the difference between those two. And the material used is uh, stainless steel 316L. The thinnest part here is only 200 micron here. And the hole here is only about five millimeter. To the right, you see the titanium ring, which is a smart device. The material used is the titanium 6-4 alloy. And the structure is undercut, which is impossible to form using conventional mold technology. And the surface is uh, polished in this case. So if it is not polished, it is not going to be as shiny as this one. And for those of you who don't know the P PM, the powder metallurgy process so well, actually the sintering or the binding and sintering of titanium and titanium alloy is quite difficult. So not everyone can offer this material in the MIM sector. Let's move to the quality control topic. So we are focused on the evaluation stage and we uh, consider that it is very important part of our microming technology. Since the early stage of our MIM production history, which is about 25 years now, the reliable uh, few millimeter size metal component evaluation was very limited. And we have developed our own evaluation technology with world's leading measurement equipment manufacturers that we have been updating as well, of course. We have deployed both on and offline evaluation system and our quality assurance system is certified by ISO 13485 as we have approximately 60% of the customers in medical device industry. We believe it might help reduce the uh, um, manufacturer auditing or supplier auditing by our customer in the future if we have this ISO, which has been the case already. And surely we will do our full support to be qualified in your manufacturing registration if uh, we are moving to the serial production. And the details are introduced in our previous series of webinar, which was a six webinar. So please have a look of that archive. So these were the um, summary of the significant points that comprise our microMIM technology. Strong green parts, which is thanks to our original binder system, 100% material yield, which makes the microwave technology very green technology, almost in invisible parting line that is coming from our very fine powder that we are able to use. And using the, the fine metal powder is not just using the fine metal powder, we have to readjust other processes as well. Then we are creating the components with minimum pass machining 
and that shape production is what we are aiming to achieve. The debinding and sintering, uh, once the process is something that also makes our Micromin um, special technology. Then our original technology called 3D Micromin technology is something that allows your component designer to be very creative and free to design your metal components. Then the AM technology that allows our customer to be very quick to the market when they are making prototype parts before they move to the main production. Then uh, last but not least, the quality assurance system with state-of-the-art technology is essential as we need to ensure what we are manufacturing is up to your standard.